My new website is now completed. And in fact, as I was writing my backstory of like, how did I get to where I am today? It got me thinking about the uh, the journey and the development that I went on to actually get to this point in being able to help people with their anxiety. And one of the things that certainly came to mind for me was thinking about the terminology that the dating industry uses and not just really with just dating, but I think just pick up in general. And I thought, you know what, maybe it'd be a good idea to do a video talking about the history of the pickup terminology and I think really what my thoughts are on it and where everything in the industry needs to go if it's going to really help people with their anxiety because and saying this straight off the bat I actually think the pickup terminology genuinely does cause uh, anxiety for people and I'll I'll kind of elaborate on that, but uh, I do. I think just that terminology kind of gets people a little bit too lost in the concept of trying to meet women and it makes people think a little bit too calculated. So let's start with the actual history of the the journey of, of what the world of pickup and dating has gone on to where it is now. So for those who maybe aren't aware of the history of pickup, maybe even those who have or haven't read Neil Strauss's book and been introduced to it maybe in just recent times. Back in, I think, 2006 is when I think Neil Strauss's book came out, which was called The Game, which introduced the world to the idea of pickup, that there were people called pickup artists who were walking around the streets around the world and they were learning how to develop their confidence, be better with women and mastering the art of seduction. Now, certainly the experiences I think back then of doing pickup is very, very different now. And in fact, it's kind of evolved into encouraging people to be a lot more authentic and genuine with their interactions rather than like relying on like lines and routines to... Uh, to kind of build that attraction where ultimately the big issues that people had was that uh, women were falling in love with the character that they were essentially portraying through the uh, the scripts they were using rather than you know the women falling for the guy who was using those lines and routines and I think one of the most beautiful messages that came out of uh, Neil Strauss's book was that towards the end of the book when he did end up meeting someone that he really liked um, that he just started using the pickup lines less and less and that was when she started falling for him more and more so pickup lines I think over the years it started off as a as a great kind of like stepping stone for guys guys who just had no social skills whatsoever and it at least gave them that ability to go out and just start talking to people it sort of took away that that headache and hesitation and certainly i think i'm not going to say it removed people's anxiety but it certainly at least kind of like made people more confident and have more conviction with going to talk to strangers because they knew that they were going to say like tried and tested stuff that was going to get them x results and the x was always going to be good results of sorts but as time certainly went on and and i'll even sort of state like pickup has certainly existed well and truly before um neil strauss's book came out you know, guys were learning or trying to learn how to be better with women, especially those who just weren't brought up in the environments that allowed them to, you know, meet women or go on dates or even just sort of like socialize properly. And so there was like kind of like a a weird dip in social standards, I think. And there would be, you had the guys who kind of were grown up in the right sort of environments or came from like money or they went into the right kind of like job roles that meant that they were you know developing their confidence and stuff and they were fine they didn't really need to use pickup lines whatever their life just kind of sold itself to to women but then you had the guys who genuinely struggled with women and again this is where just the pickup terminology came in to help men with 
being able to talk to people. So it started off, I think, all really positively. And, you know, and for certainly, I think, a long while, it made all the difference in the world for guys, especially when I remember in my early years when I was working with uh, with dating coaches and certainly pickup coaches, some that have still, well, still exist and certainly a hell of a lot that have just had to leave the industry for one reason or another. But it meant that there was... There was eventually a moment where guys, yes, they were using the lines and routines and stuff, but as the industry became more and more popular, um, it meant everyone was just saying the exact same thing with going out and about. And, you know, and it kind of also meant, especially like in London, probably the same anywhere else as well. But when you started having everyone using the same lines and routines and scripts and so on, that it was inevitable that at some point you were going to be running into women who'd already heard those same lines and routines before. And in fact, it then meant that those interactions were no longer genuine and the women absolutely called guys out on that and more power to them. In fact, I think it's kind of that uh, that kind of conversation that actually led to guys realising that, you know what, Lines and routines are great when you're starting off, but if you just rely on them for your entire dating life, then you're no different really from every other guy who's also using it in the industry. And if you're going to the same locations that every other guy who got into the pickup industry was also using the same lines and routines, then, you know, women were just seeing through that 100%. And it just meant that, you know, guys weren't, then getting the results that they wanted and women were essentially being driven to go to other kinds of guys where at least they were being genuine and honest so the industry at certain point I think it must have been about maybe 2014 2015 I know that was sort of roughly the time when I started filming with coaches and uh, started really working on their businesses on YouTube that just brought in a whole different angle to the dating community or to the pickup industry that genuinely tried to make it more authentic and uh, try and bring out people's personalities and bring out their confidence so that then they could just have conversations that were more appropriate to them rather than thinking like, oh, well, if I say X, then I will get Y. And over the years as well, there's certainly been products that have, uh, I think, um, kept guys in line with the pickup paradigm um, and have uh, really just, I think, given guys more of a structure of a conversation uh, rather than um, them actually sort of like, oh, well, if you say this, then you'll get that result. And a great example of this is back in the day when daygame.com existed, uh, they created what was called the daygame blueprint. And that was then sort of like absorbed like a sponge by so many men in the community. And you'll still probably find to this day, so many coaches rely on the day game blueprint to teach their clients. And it's kind of like a bit of a blessing and a curse with that because it certainly did shape the industry. But I do kind of think it's a little bit heartbreaking that still coaches who do rely on that structure of, excuse me, I, I literally just saw you and I had to tell you something really quickly. What I noticed about you was X, Y, Z, which, you know, not to knock it, but I have heard it like tens of thousands of times that I actually have like PTSD from listening to that phrase. It drives me absolutely up the wall um, that just by being stuck saying that again, it just meant that uh, guys were literally trying to all sound like the guy who the actual blueprint was based on. And again, coaches were just relying on that structure they don't know how to be themselves. They don't know how to bring in their own personality. But certainly over the years, as time has gone on and as I've gotten involved even more so working with coaches, I have been able to also break them out of that paradigm of stop thinking about the day game blueprint. What do you want to say to women? How can you be more confident? What's more authentic to you and the interests you have rather than saying something that, yes, has been tried and tested, definitely works, but isn't based on you or anything of your character or personality. So 
again, it meant that guys were then being able to start breaking out of the habit of the uh, the the lines and routines that were being said. But, you know, it still meant, though, that the guys were being trapped within that. But do I think, though, that, that using, like, pick up lines and routines and stuff are uh, inherently bad? No, no. I think it's only bad, I think, if guys are reliant on it, especially as years go on and they're not really developing their personality or bringing that out. Now, okay, you know, if you're, even if you're just looking to go out and have a bit of fun, it's still kind of quite disingenuous if you're just trying to put on a character or if you're essentially lying in your interactions to get what you want. And that is actually, can be, well, that can definitely be quite manipulating And I've seen that used not even just on women, but just on like men in general. And I have known fortunately coaches who have disappeared who would manipulate the guys uh, that they wanted as clients into working with them because they just understood uh, the uh, how to inherently um, uh, handle all of those objections because they dealt with stuff. And also they created their own script to know how to handle certain things. But no, I don't think the pickup terminology is all bad. You know, I think it's great that if guys really are lost and confused and they don't know how to get started, why not use stuff that is tried and tested to just help you to build confidence? But when you do get to a certain point with that and, you know, and it's hard really to sort of say to someone where that point is. I mean, you'll know it deep down but you get to a certain point where you actually feel very confident being able to use those lines and routines that's kind of the moment where you also need to start incorporating your own stuff as well what do you want to say to someone that could help to build attraction but also filter the people that you're speaking to now I'm going to just use as the easy example here if you're someone who's looking for a relationship using lines and routines is not going to get you a girlfriend well it will but she's going to fall in love with that character or that alter ego that you've created rather than the lines uh, rather than your authentic genuine self the person who you want to be outside of using pickup lines and whatnot and um and that is really where that genuine connection is going to be and i've known guys over the years who've gone into relationships with women who had fallen for that persona rather than them and then they've wondered afterwards why things didn't work out and it's been simply because of being reliant on using the uh the script or those lines and routines but Also, I think though with using um, pickup terminology, it has made it even easier for people or men to actually understand what is going on in the world of building attraction. And, you know, men are certainly very, very logical when it comes to a lot of things. And, you know, they want the best way that they can process stuff is by actually understanding the, okay, the cause and effect of things. If I do this, why do I get why? Or if I do this how does that happen? Or, okay, if I do X, I get Y, you know, with conviction as well. So it certainly gave guys, I think, a lot more clarity and understanding with stuff. But again, it wasn't really teaching them to develop their conversation skills or how to actually overcome their anxiety. It was easier to kind of um, almost, I think, what's the word, compartmentalize and split this alter ego from their true self and their true self was still a very very anxious guy that had a lot of personal issues and that was being distracted by this new alter ego who was confident with women who was getting results and unfortunately and you see in fact you probably see this I think with actors as well when they do a lot of like method acting they struggle with reality because they've played so many different characters that they struggle trying to get back into their own body, I think is probably the way to say it. And I have seen that happen with guys as well. So, you know, when guys get into, you know, the dating community or or if they're even like trying to do pick up if they're going out and about, then you've got to just be aware that, yes, using the lines and stuff is great, but don't be reliant on them. 
Um, it's useful certainly to understand what's going on. It makes it even easier, I think, to actually digest the information. And maybe in a way it actually makes it more fun because you've kind of got this lingo with the other lads that you can talk about and they understand you and and you understand them. It's kind of like when you're in school and, you know, there was like th these weird languages that, you know, people made up so that you could kind of like talk to each other in code, you know. So it, yes, it, it can kind of work in that sense. But I think though in sort of like the later years, if you are still reliant on that, I think it can make guys a little too strategic and overthink the whole process of meeting women. And it can really pull it out of that kind of natural conversation with people, which is where really you want to have um, your interactions or where the best conversations take place. I mean, you can see it even in a lot of, I think, the conversations that some of my other clients, like, like Christian, for example, and even David out in Australia, you know, you look at their conversations, there's nothing really besides maybe just that opener, which I think is kind of fine because, I mean, in reality, no one really remembers like the first 10 seconds that was said to them when they first met someone. It's the conversations afterwards that become more memorable and that happens as well if you're having like proper authentic conversations with people and that's why you know Christian is amazing with his conversations he really is so genuine and authentic he brings out his personality he brings out his sense of humor he brings out that masculine energy and that's what makes him him and same with David out in Australia for him he has, you know, very down to earth, very relaxed kind of conversations with people. And he's someone who really likes to maybe not poke fun, but he likes to certainly like uh, question certain things and, and sort of throw in like a bit of flirty interrogation. So it kind of challenges the women that he's speaking to and uh, makes them a bit more invested in the conversation. So point being is all of these best coaches that are out there in the world, you know, they have their own unique style. They're not necessarily relying on, you know, pick up lines and routines to meet women. Yes, they've got their own natural scripts that they've created. It's a bit like if a comedian, you know, says a joke at one event, they're going to use it at all of the rest of their events, especially if they know it, you know, gets a laugh out of people in the audience. And it's the same sort of thing here. And, and even maybe... Have a think about some of the conversations that you've had with like friends and family and stuff and how you've probably spoken about the same topics with people. But when you've spoken about the same thing over and over, maybe you've got more conviction in it. Maybe you're better at delivering it. And, um, and you know, and especially with jokes, maybe your, your, your punchiness with it as well makes it more funny and you get better results with it afterwards with people that you tell the jokes to. So... You know, being able to pull uh, to go into a much more authentic conversation with people is important and it's going to pull you out as well. I keep saying pull out. I, <laughs> I don't know what I'm go going with that direction there, but um, it certainly takes you away from that kind of like strategic thinking. And trust me when I say, because uh, I actually at one point was so obsessed with the world of pickup. We're going back maybe to like 2013 here. Um, but I was so obsessed with pickup. I kept thinking about how to do the perfect approach and I just obsessed over the terminology and how to do things and stuff that it made it very difficult to actually talk to people because I was trying to think 50 steps ahead. And that happens when you over obsess with the pickup terminology and it's not necessary. So I think going forward, what do I think really needs to, to kind of happen? Well, I think the actual pickup terminology and the use of like scripts and routines and stuff, I think it does need to kind of die down and eventually be kind of like weaned out. For guys who are new to the industry, I think that's really the only people who should be that should be applicable to with using pickup terminology. But once you've done it for a little while, I think you have to move on. I think as well, the over obsession with trying to learn all of the terminology I think that can also backfire a lot for guys. I think it certainly does cause a lot of anxiety. I think, you know, trying to understand certain things are important. And certainly I think there have been some great terms that have developed over the years that have made understanding 
um, uh, attracting women or, or just meeting women in general uh, much easier. So like easy ones would be indicators of interest, that kind of like moment that uh, someone has indicated uh, that they're attracted to you or that they are checking you out or interested in you. Same with the terminology of like cold approaching as well. I think that is a, a brilliant term because certainly in sales, you know, there are things such as cold calling and warm calling and hot calls as well. So, you know, it's great that other elements have been able to be brought in here, but some of the old school per, uh, pickup terminology of, of like calling women targets or two sets, three sets or rating women out of 10 and stuff. I mean, it, you know, I, I, even I can't deny there is certainly kind of a, a misogynistic approach with that. And it kind of, again, plays on that pickup paradigm that just has guys trapped and has them as this attitude that I don't think it's going to make them necessarily better with women. They'll get better results. But I think relationship wise and connection wise, I think it just makes them further from maybe even where they were without that kind of terminology. So certainly I think certain things do need to be kind of phased out, but other things absolutely should still be embraced and and welcomed and, and used as well. So I think that's really kind of my thoughts on this video. I'd actually, I'd love to hear what you think with it as well. Uh, what do you think about using pickup and uh, dating terminology that exists in the dating communities? And do you think everything should be kept? Do you think everything should be removed? What do you think should be kept? What should be removed and so on? I'd love to kind of hear your thoughts. But I ultimately believe like the best thing that men can do is try and move away from anything that really is pickup terminology related and I think you'll probably find that you'll have better conversations with people and you'll be thinking a lot more authentically as well rather than being too strategic with how you're going to do stuff you'll bring out a much more I think fun version of yourself is uh is probably where I'm getting at there so that's it for the video. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel as well to stay up to date on more content that's going to help you with your anxiety. My brand new website is now fully finished. So have a look in the description below. I'd love to uh, hear your thoughts on it. So definitely check it out. Have a look at all of the different coaching that I have available. I have now added a new service, which I have called Dating Desensitization Therapy or DDT for short, which is essentially going out and doing cold approaching, but on a much more beginner scale to just help men with their anxiety out in public and with talking to strangers and if anything, maybe prepping you for going to a dating coach so you can really make the most out of your time with them because dating coaches aren't cheap and I want you to get the best out of working with a dating coach and sometimes going from level zero to 100 is too big of a leap. You need to kind of take some incremental steps beforehand and that is my job to get you prepped and ready so you are going to get the best results possible especially if you're either going out on your own, going out with friends or actually working with a coach too. So have a look at my website, have a look at my dating desensitization therapy, have a look at my life coaching and my IEMT. So that's integral eye movement therapy too. But until then, thank you very much for watching. Look forward to more videos coming from me, Dan, that dating anxiety guy. And I also need to go and have a drink of water because my throat is now killing me.